sisters, praise the Lord. Um, <clears throat> I hope you guys are having a good day today. So, um, wow, there's so many things happening in the world right now. So many things that the Lord is revealing to us. Um, we've had the eclipse. We've had, um, uh, the Lord spoke to me and told me 921 is a scoreboard. I also see 921 written on a planet. Um, we're at 923 right now, which many of us believe is the Revelation 12 sign, which is another sign. Um, we have... Uh, Let's see, Obama doing his thing uh, on October 31st. It's his inauguration for his foundation, and he's inviting all these world leaders to attend. And Andrew Rich put two and two together with uh, the help of a couple of her subs um, that Obama was a guest speaker of the 500th anniversary of the Reformation, and I haven't seen clips of it. I think they cut it out. But word is that he basically called himself God at this time. And October 31st, the same day that he's having his um, uh, little inauguration party, shindig, will be exactly 500 years on October 31st that... Um, Martin Luther, 500 years ago, nailed the decree to the door of the Catholic Church. So things are unfolding really fast, you guys. The Lord's shown us a lot of things. I know many people are saying, it's the end of the world, it's the rapture. But I, I know there's a lot of people, I don't know them personally, but that's what started spreading around like wildfire. But what these things are uh, going on is their signs. We're hearing um, there's war, there's rumors of war, um, stuff's going over in Damascus right now. Um, we had a, a big 5.8 earthquake off the coast over here in California. I didn't feel anything, um, but I believe that's going to start getting becoming more frequent. So I'm going to tell you this dream that I had. And it, it was very um, scary <laughs> um, and intense. And I believe the Lord was trying to show me again about grace and law. And, uh, okay, so I was on this arm, Amish. It has to do with the Amish. And, uh, what's gonna, what's gonna happen? So, um, a little bit about tribulation. Um, so I was on this Amish farm and I don't know what I did. I, okay. So let me tell you, I had been watching a little bit of an Amish show. It was talking about things about the Amish. <laughs> And so I believe that the Lord was showing me about the, speaking to me about the Amish in the stream. So I was on this Amish farm and I was sitting in the doorway to this door. The door was open and I, I don't know what I had done, but they were going to kill me. Um, I was sitting there and there was a, a woman Amish standing in front of me and she looks really nervous. She just looks like things were not going to go well for me. She um, kept looking at the bishop and the deacon and some other Amish guys and they were kind of around the side of the house. They were discussing what was going to happen to me and she was like, they're going to kill you. I said, I was just, I was panicking inside. I knew that it was bad, bad. And I had my son. I don't have a son. 
but in the dream I had a son and he was sitting on my lap facing me. He was about a year old and I was hugging him very tight to my chest and I was just, my heart was breaking, breaking inside and they were going to kill him first. And one of the Amish boys kept coming from the bishop and the deacons and running back to running to the woman standing in front of me, whispering things to her and then running back. They were deciding my fate because I had broken the law is basically what it was. I had they were going to shun me, but it was even worse than that. They weren't just going to shun me. They were going to kill me and they were going to kill my son. And. I said, I kept telling the woman, I said, please, please, please just let me walk out of here. I will not tell them what happened here today. I won't say anything to anybody. I will walk, I'll just take my son and I'll walk right out of here and nobody has to get hurt. You guys don't have to do this. And she had this worried look on her face and, um, the bishop and a deacon came over and I I don't know what they were saying, but they were yelling and they were yelling at me and I just kept begging them, please just let me walk on out of here and take my son and um, I won't tell anybody what happened here today. Everybody can just go back the way it was. And um, they left back around the side of the house And, um, and then one, then the deacon came back around the side of the house. It was kind of like a barn was attached to the side of the house. They were going around the side of that. And, um, through all this commotion, my son had slipped down kind of like off my lap. And I went, I grabbed him by the arm and went to pull him back up onto my lap. And the woman said, be careful. Don't pull his, don't yank his arm like that. And I wasn't, she was just being kind of overly And when I think about that, I think about the Lord was showing me that the Amish still do, um, you know, they still, uh, have a reverence for Jesus because my son represented Jesus. They still have a reverence for him, but they're missing the mark. Okay. So, um, so then the so then the deacon came back around the side and he was smiling and he was laughing and he looked at the woman and he looked at me and he said, um, apple red is ready. And I got this look on my face and he was like kind of grin grinning. And I thought apple red and terror just shot through me because the woman looked at me and she said, yeah, that's who we, that's who we feed the people to is apple red and or it was red apple apple red or red apple I don't know but you guys apple red is a horse and as soon as she said this I had a vision inside of my dream and it was like excuse me I mean this this dream terrified me it was a face of a of a a deceased person and what apple red did was they ate out it ate out the eyeballs and the lips and the mouth of the person it it killed him like that it was this horse that ate out the evil horse that ate out the eyes and the lips and the mouth of people and they were about ready to feed my my baby son to this apple red horse and I, and then he said, apple red is almost ready. And she's like, yeah, they keep them down. Like, um, cause the house must've been up on side of a cliff or stilt or something. Because when they walked around the back, they were walking kind of into the basement. It was under the house. It was like this big, the house set up on top of the barn that went down along the side of this hill. It was weird. So as soon as he walked away again, I said, I got mad. I said, I'm going to tell you something. Um, my dad knows exactly where I'm at. I told him I was coming here before I, before I even got here. 
He knows exactly where I'm at. And if you do one thing to me, he's going to be here on your little country. I forget what I said, but he's going to be down here so fast and he's going to know exactly what happened. And you guys are going to be found guilty. I said, and he's going to kill you. And she's like, oh yeah, who's your dad? I said, his name is Joshua Randall Jordan. And he is, um, is a military sergeant and he's going to know exactly what happened. And, um, uh, she's, she's, she got kind of scared, like, okay, maybe this plan's not going to work. So, um, and while I was saying this, the bishop walked up and I said, he's going to kill you guys. His, his name is, is Joshua Randall Jordan, and he is a military sergeant and he's going to kill you guys when he finds out what you've done and, um, killing my son and killing me. And then the ne it's changed to a next scene. So the next scene was there. We, I was hovering over the top, um, of these railroad tracks and these railroad tracks were coming out of this dark cave and at the mouth opening of the cave, there was a bunch of sticks and stones and rubble and stuff like that. And it was being held back by some kind of a, um, a support system that was very fragile. And as I hovered over the mouth of this cave and the railroad tracks were coming out of this cave, there was a drop. I mean, the ground was so far um, down that you could barely even see trees and make out. It's like you were up at, way up in the air looking down on the earth. And the railroad tracks were bare. It was just like bars with tracks going across it all the way across this huge canyon. And there was some Amish people there and they were stuck at this cave that any type of a rumbling that would happen, this um, rubble and sticks and stones would, would fall on them. But they couldn't get across. They couldn't get across on these tracks because these tracks were probably only like two feet long and they were just barely a skeleton of a railroad track. And it, even if they did decide to get on the railroad tracks, they would fall to their deaths. And um, that was the end of that. So when I woke up and started thinking about the stream and I knew that, um, the Amish people, uh, represented law and grace, my son represented Jesus and they were trying to kill Jesus. They were trying to kill him because they practice law and some of the law that they go off of is just extreme. They, they take the law of the Old Testament and they just make it crazy. They even make up their own laws of, off of those laws. Um, no power or electricity. They believe that that brings demons in the home and um, no this, no that, no the other thing. You can't do this. They believe that it invites demons into your house. If you're if you're mar if you have sexual relations before you're married and this and that and the other thing and and you're not holy and you're going to burn in hell the rest of your life and they shun you which means that no nobody's allowed to talk to you if like if you do something and you're shunned that means your kids if you have a a little baby you're not allowed to hold it the baby's not allowed to look at you um it's crazy the amount of law that they put into their religion it's the whole religion is based off of law and then and then some and then some crazy laws but when um they do this they they make the work of jesus jesus's work on the cross to no effect there's no grace there's no grace in their religion and, and they're killing uh, the Lord Jesus over and over and over again. They're just, just like a big slap in the face. 
And so, you know, I sit here and I think, do I run around judging people for the things that they've done or condemning people for the things that they've done like the Amish do? Do I shun people because I think, oh, you know, I'm like, am I an Amish person? I hope not because, you know, and you know what? I'm sure there's so many good Amish people. I'm not saying nothing about that, about the person itself. But as far as um, the doctrine and the religion, um, I believe the Lord was showing me that, you know, it's all law. It's all bad. And and uh, they just try to kill Christ. They try to kill him. And he, he already died for our sins. All these people that are in all these religions and they're living by law and they're condemning other Christians or condemning other people in church. They're condemning their families. They're saying this and that and the other thing. And, you know, it's making God's sacrifice to no effect. And it's turning people away and it's hurting people. And you're, you're talking about people and you're treating them bad and you're talking to other people about people and you know you're uplifting some other people oh they're so holy look at them oh but you're not look at you you know and then now there's clicks now there's clicks and our brothers and sisters groups now we have groups and clicks She's so holy and pious looking. Oh, she only wears lip gloss. Oh, look, she doesn't even wear makeup. You know, that type of stuff. Oh, she has such a sensible haircut. Really, all that stuff really doesn't matter. What matters is Jesus Christ and his his, uh, greatest love and his sacrifice for us on the cross. I look around on Facebook and some of this, some of these other places and I'm just like, wow. (laughs) Anyway, so when I said, when I stood up and I told her my dad, which was talking about God knows where I'm at. And when he sees what you've done, he's going to kill you. So I believe the horse represents, um, the red horse that's going to come, come the white horse and the red horse. I already had a dream about the white horse. And then when I said Joshua Randall Jordan, I'll tell you the meanings of those names. So Joshua, we know Joshua in the Bible. Joshua's best, for people that don't know, just to run down, I'm just reading this, okay? Joshua is best known as Moses' second in command who takes over and leads the Israelites into the promised land after Moses' death. Joshua is considered one of the Bible's greatest military leaders for leading the seven-year conquest of the Promised Land and is often held up as a model for leadership and a source of practical application on how to be an effective leader. He was one of the biggest military leaders, and he led people into the land of Canaan. He went into, into a lot of battles. Um, It's funny how I said, my dad, he's a sergeant in the military. (laughs) And uh, the Lord is so good. And his name's Joshua. Which is symbolic because um, of the seven years. Uh, And he was one of the spies, too. Joshua and Caleb were the only two who urged the people to take the land. Here we see one thing that sets Joshua and Caleb apart from the rest of the Israelites. They believed in the promises of God. Mm. It's amazing. And then, um, Jordan, of course, um, It was the boundary of the land of Canaan, the Jordan River. It was the boundary of the land of Canaan. 
See, and that's the same. So it all goes together. Okay, and then Randall means um, wolf shield. A shield from a wolf. Pretty amazing. Pretty amazing. It all goes together with the law and grace and, and people dressed like sheep, but they're wolves. Right. So, um, and then the apple horse. That was scary. <laughs> that was really scary. Um, and then the rapture train, you know, they're stuck there. They're, they're on this fake, um, salvation train tracks waiting for this train to come, but really all the rubble's about to fall on them. And, uh, so I'm sitting there, I'm like, am I Amish? I don't want to be like an Amish. I don't want to be, you know, bringing law and condemnation upon people. I want to be bringing the message of the cross and God's grace that whosoever, whosoever shall believe on him will have everlasting life. You know, those that confess with their mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord and, and believe in their hearts and they call upon his name and accept him into their hearts, they will be saved. This is a promise. They'll be, they'll be sealed to the day of redemption. Amen. All right, you guys. I love you guys. This video is getting kind of long. But, uh, I'm praying for us all and we know that the Lord is so near, so near. There's this other sister. She's been seeing like, you know, the glory of the Lord in the sky. And, uh, there's people that are taking home videos of a second, uh, planet showing in the sky right now. There's so many things going on. The tribulation's about to begin. We are in the last minutes, the last seconds. Jesus is coming. So, you know, give your life to him today. Don't be like an Amish. Don't, don't go around sitting in the law because if you're sitting in the law, that means you're not sitting in grace there. And you can't serve, you can't serve two masters. That's what that means. You know, you're, you can't be lukewarm. That's what that means. Lukewarm means that you're, you know, you believe in grace and his work on the cross for all the forgiveness of sins. But then you're still over in law. You're still condemning people. You're still, you know, yes, there's the Ten Commandments. That's true. <clears throat> love the Lord God with all your heart, soul, and mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. The first four are to the Lord. The last six are how to love your neighbor. How to be good to one another. It's not trying to tell you this or that. or the, It's not trying to be like an Amish person. Don't be like an Amish person, please. That's not Jesus' will, and that's not his plan. All right. I love you guys.